You're very welcome back. Now, up until 2013, our next guest was gigging and working part-time, but after a tough battle with cancer, decided to go into comedy full-time. The Offaly man is no stranger to the screen, though. Uh, best known for playing the eccentric Father Gabriel in the spin-off series Bridget and Eamon. Now he's taking to the stage at this year's Dublin Fringe Festival. Edwin Salmon joins us this morning. Hello, sir. Hello. Uh, but before we have a proper chat, let's have a look at you in action. Now, Bridget, I'm just going to take you through a few outfits that I think will be pure dynasty for you for Ooh. the live TV finals. First up, we have Emer. Emer is wearing an outfit inspired by Quality Street. The top is a hazelnut fudge, the bottom a caramel barrel. That shimmering gold skirt practically screams Falcon Crest. I like it. And that's from Dunn's, priced £22.99. Thanks, Emer. Next up, we have Patricia. Patricia is sporting a royal blue power suit with gold encrusted shoulder pads. The neckline is high enough to give an air of respectability, yet low enough to just hint at sass. And I think blue would be a lovely color on you, Bridget. I like it, Father. And that is also from Dunn's price, 22 99 Thank you, Patricia. Thanks, Father. Don't speak, Patricia. Just smile, put your hand on your hip, and walk back through those curtains. That's exactly what happens here every morning with you. <laughs> Don't speak, Patricia. Don't speak. Because the end of that clip is me trying on a dress and running out with my bottom exposed. So does that happen here right. as well? <laughs> Absolutely. So that exactly that bit happens. doesn't happen. Okay, I'm glad you That's what this happens. Welcome, oh. Edwin. Hey, thanks for having me. Thanks for coming well, in. How about right. I just want to sit back and watch the rest of the episode now, which is probably a good sign. <laughs> well, it's available on, ha on Amazon Prime and Hulu. There you is go. It? You might as well and get the plug in. Maybe the RT player, I don't know. I don't... <laughs> Who knows? I we don't, don't have watch, that, sorry. I don't watch myself. We, we, we ain't got that app. Oh. So we've I... lots of things to talk about, including Bridget and Eamon, yes. but can we, can we kind of take you back in terms of uh, when your career started? Yes. Because it was all taken off and then you had a setback. So maybe uh, take us back there. We won't, we won't dwell yeah. on it for too long. We don't want to make you sad. I, I, was, I was working in a DIY store that I can't name for legal reasons, but it's not B&Q <laughs> or home base, and it rhymes with goodies. <laughs> um, and I was doing comedy part-time, and I was sort of... Uh, and then I ended up doing the job part-time and trying to, to sort of force myself to do more comedy. And then I didn't feel very well. Uh, and I was quite pale and had a sore stomach, so I went in and had a colonoscopy and I was diagnosed with bowel cancer and secondary liver cancer. My goodness. And then I had a bunch of uh, operations and medicine and prayers. Jeez. And How long were you feeling unwell for? A uh, cu couple of months. But, uh, see, it, it ran in my... F or it runs in my family, okay. unfortunately. So straight away I kind of suspected what it was. There were flags or whatever you kind of... Yeah. yeah okay. So... Uh, and I was just lucky. I mean, I was just lucky that I, that they caught it early. That it's one of the cancers that's very prominent. It's like the second most most common, uh, which is they know how to treat it. And I, yeah, I was just lucky, basically. Straight in, sort of jail. And then you just f physically, I had to just kind of go. Okay, yeah, just kind of have to steal yourself physically and mentally, but... Um, you hand yourself over to it, don't you, for a period of time? Yeah, you just that's have it. To. Yeah. You trust in your surgeons and you trust in the people who are looking after you and the oncology nurses and everyone in, in Banlasloe Hospital and in the matter here where I had my liver surgery were amazing people. I mean, like people who... Nurses should be paid all of the money that bankers are paid. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, I always have believed that because they're literally... Oh, incredible. It's like a calling, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's calling, but it's also a really difficult job yeah. that needs to be recognised. And if someone's looking after, if someone uh, taking care of their health, you don't want them to be worrying about where their their rent is coming from or anything like that. I think yeah. it's a kind of a, you know, it's like having a drunk airline pilot. You know, you, you don't want that. It's just wrong. You don't want that combination. Uh -huh. You know, even yeah. though planes fly themselves, but still. It's unnerving. Yeah. How old were you when you got your diagnosis? What age were you? Uh, I was 36. Right. And then when, how, how long was treatment going on for then after that? Uh, it was like a couple of years, two years right. or something like and that. And were you working at the same time? Were you trying trying to like... I was doing gigs uh, as much as I could. Yeah. Um, as much as I was able. Uh, it kind of, I mean, it kept me going. <clears throat> and then you get this sort of natural uh, adrenaline rush uh, from doing the gigs. Uh-huh. 
And then, of course, there's all the drugs that are backstage and booze. No, I'm joking. <laughs> um, but you do, it, it gave me something to look forward to. And then you do, like, when I did a gig, I just forgot everything, you know. I f I yeah, forget that helps, yeah. The, the pain, I forget. It's like when you wake so up So it's in the a morning. lovely escape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was something that I was always kind of keep me going. It's like, oh, in two weeks' time, uh -huh. I'll have that gig up and done. At, at what point in the story, then, did the telly come along? Because the Republic of Telly was really where we saw you first. Yeah. Really? Yeah, I, I decided when I, when I got through it and I got the all clear, I was like, OK, I'll move back up to Dublin now and I'll do comedy full time, I guess. <laughs> Because that's a career choice that makes sense. It's a brave, <laughs> it's a brave shout, yeah. And I said it to my parents, thinking they'd be like, don't do that. But they were like, um, yeah, that makes sense. Chase your dreams. Yeah, like, you can do that. And I was like, OK, fair enough. And then I was just terrified. And then uh, I'd done some sketches and stuff on, on Republic Telly. I'd actually played a priest on Republic Telly <clears throat> and was just messing around in between takes essentially doing my mother's voice, which is what Father Gabriel's voice is, <laughs> okay. to do with, you know, religion. <laughs> but, uh, and uh, J Jason Butler rang me up and said, we're doing a spin-off show. Do you want to play a priest in the spin-off show? And I was like, I thought it was just one episode. I was like, yeah, OK, I'll do that. And then got the scripts. And I'm like, oh, I'm in this a lot. Cool. More and money. Then, and Get a few more bucks for that then. That yeah. was it. Brilliant. Brilliant. So that kind of gave me enough of a profile that I could do stand up, more stand up and do it kind of full time because it's a really difficult industry. Well, yeah. that's exactly what I was going to say to you. I mean, <clears throat> yeah. any comedian we've ever spoken to in here have been honest and said there's been a moment where they've stood on stage and absolutely bombed. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I, was I mean, you're not Higgins. worth it if you, ha if you haven't had that moment, I don't think, in your career at some point. Yeah, I mean, I, I haven't bombed, but I've, I've told jokes through a sort of a, a spitting, shouting, <laughs> you know, hatred coming from... Like, I once had an English woman, because I did this joke about England and how we have this complicated relationship with England, and she wasn't listening, and she was very, very drunk, and she was, like, right in my face going, you were crap! And you, and you pull the, the Mickey out of the English. She didn't say Mickey, she said something else. Yeah. And I just went, oh, thanks very much. And that confuses people. <laughs> when, you just, when you're nice to them, that, that confuses them. I never, I never rise to that. But, yeah. No, you can't. But it's t it can be tough, yeah. Tell us about the uh, Fringe Festival show. Oh, what the do Dublin doing? Fringe Festival. Up to Dublin for the Fringe oh, Festival. Oh, to Dublin for the Fringe. Well, there's lots going on. Uh, the show that I was doing in Edinburgh in August, uh, we're doing a run, it's called Dream Gun Film Reads. I love this. This uh, is yeah. brilliant. Yeah, and it's different every night, isn't it's it? It's a different movie every night, but we basically take uh, uh, a classic movie and it's rewritten to, and condensed to an hour and told with loads of jokes. And if you love movies and laughing and being alive, and if you enjoy the things <laughs> that you enjoy, <laughs> and you'll definitely enjoy this. Yeah. Uh, it's, very, it's really hard to explain to people, but if you, if you like Lord of the Rings, but you think it should be funnier, um, come see me do Gandalf. That. Um, or Jaws. Like, that's one of my favourite Yeah, what ones. are the movies? So there's Lord of the Rings, there's Jaws. Lord of the Rings, Jaws, Die Hard. Uh, we're doing one on the 14th of September, which is The Lion King, which is like an all-ages thing. <laughs> uh, be interested in that. OK. And what, God, what else is there? Uh, Batman? No, I can't remember. Right, okay. It's all, it's all, so, on, the, it's all on the Dublin Fringe Festival. And it's all website. improv it's all on the around website. The, the, your favourite movies. And you it, well, it's, it's written, yeah. it's unrehearsed, and we perform it kind of like a radio play, but there's cool. always mistakes and there's always things that awesome. go wrong. Brilliant. Which is where the comedy is. Uh, I wanted to mention Galway as well, very quickly. Comedy yes. card of Galway. I'm, you playing, I'm playing on the 25th of October in the King's Head at 1 o'clock. It's my brand new show called Edwin Salmon of Knowledge. I've resisted a fish-based punnery, <laughs> but who am I cutting? There's a time and a place, oh, yeah. <laughs> and that time and place is now, and it's called Edward <laughs> Salmon of Knowledge. We it's love just, a good pun. It's an hour of, of the things I know and the things I don't know. OK. And there's a lot of things I don't know. So the second part is going to be longer than the first, is it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I complain about toilets from around the world for about 20 minutes. Oh, okay. Excellent. I love it already. It's something that everyone can relate to. We can to. all relate. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's the end of October in Galway. Yes. Lovely, lovely. Yes. Thank you for popping into us, Edward. Thanks for having me. That's it. Success done. Success and done. health. Oh, thank you. That's Thanks. 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 You're off the hook. God bless. <laughs> <laughs> right, if you want to nab tickets to Edwin's hilarious ensemble comedy show, head to fringefest.com.